morning everyone it is as always very good to see you again this morning and um, I really hope that today is going to be something that touches your heart and that the seriousness of the subject really really that you really get it and that it's something that you will work towards our topic today um, is about forgiveness and um, you ask but isn't it about holiness well if we are harboring unforgiveness it will definitely affect our journey into holiness so that is why we're speaking about this let's just welcome the holy spirit and say father thank you for your presence i thank you that you are always with us that you guide us and you lead us. I thank you for your wisdom and understanding. I thank you for an open heart and a receiving spirit as we go into your word, Lord. I thank you for your blessing. And Holy Spirit, you are so welcome to guide and to lead us into your truth. Amen. So, forgiveness... <clears throat> forgiveness is very serious and it's not always a comfortable subject um, like I said previously sometimes our pain is what identifies us it's what we worship it's what becomes our first love because without our pain we don't even know who we are anymore now the devil the devil's greatest greatest weapon is to keep you from knowing who you are, to keep you broken, to keep you in trauma. Because if you don't know who you are, then you're no threat to him. If he can keep you in that state, then you are absolutely no threat to his kingdom of darkness. So he likes to keep us there. <clears throat> now what happens, normally when we harboring unforgiveness, towards a person it is because that person made us believe something about ourselves that person hurt us if that person said something that we didn't take as true for ourselves it wouldn't hurt us and we wouldn't hold on to it but it's because you now believe something about yourself because of the pain So, going into this, um, I just want to read something, um, well not something, it's, it's the Lord's Prayer, but I'm going to read it for you out of the Amplified and the Passion Translation because they go into the deeper meaning of the text, of the Greek text in this case, and it says, and forgive us our debts. As we are forgiven our debtors, letting go of both the wrong and the resentment, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So I'm just going to read this again. And forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors, letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. And then just, this, is, this was Matthew 6 verse 12. Then Matthew 6 verse 14 says, For if you forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, nurturing your hurt and anger with the result that, is, that it interferes with your relationship with God, then your father will not forgive you your trespasses. So this is very serious. This is very, very serious. Now Jesus was crucified for our sins. He was crucified so that we can be forgiven. There were so many offerings, all those offerings that we spoke about in Leviticus uh, 
sin offering, guilt offering. All those offerings is to, to get forgiveness from God. And then Jesus came as the last sacrificial lamb for our forgiveness. So he makes it very clear in his prayer to his Father. Forgive us as we forgive. So are you forgiven if you, if you have unforgiveness in your heart? Has God forgiven your sins? Are you free from your sins? Do you think the devil knows this verse? He used, he used Bible verses to tempt Jesus in the wilderness. This is serious. This is so, so important. And you know, it's, if you go deeper into the Bible, if you go deeper into science even, it has been proven how unforgiveness and that kind of thought processes actually poisons your body. So how much of our sickness and disease in this world, or this cancer that's just everywhere, how much of that is due to unforgiveness? God doesn't want us to not do something if it doesn't harm us. You'll see everything that God asks us not to do hurts us. He's trying to keep you safe. He's a loving Father. And even Jesus on the cross, after everything that he endured, said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. You have to ask for God for his heart here, for his people. I know forgiveness is a very, very sensitive subject. I know the words so well that says, I forgive them, but I do not forget. But it says here, for letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. If you say, but I do not forget, the resentment is there. When you hear that person's name, something inside of you goes into that place. It triggers you. Up until that's gone, you have not forgiven. Then the Amplified, ach, not the Amplified, that was the Amplified, the Passion Translation, says it like this. Um, Forgive us the wrongs we have done, as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. And then it says in 14, And when you pray, Make sure you forgive the faults of others so that, you, so, that, so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you for, withhold forgiveness from others, your Father withholds forgiveness from you. <clears throat> so I'm not, I'm, well I am telling you, I suppose that your sins are not forgiven if you are bringing unforgiveness. But I'm not telling you on my own opinion. I'm reading it in the Word. And we've discussed in our previous session what is truth. And we've made a choice that everything in this Word of God is truth. And this Word of truth is saying, if you do not forgive, you cannot be forgiven. So how do we do this? This word also says we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. I want you to understand that that not forgiving someone, holding on to that pain, sometimes that person has already died. That you haven't seen them for over 20 years. That person's not even in your life anymore. But this is what I'm saying. Something that that person did to you made you believe something about yourself and that has hurt you and that has, that has caused pain and trauma in your life that you are holding on to. And God, He wants to heal you. 
And if you, like we said, if you not healed, you cannot go and help heal others. We must first work on ourselves, first help heal ourselves. And Jesus is our healer. In my journey with God, the very first thing, when I made a turn, and I decided I'm going to live this life, the very first thing he put on me was forgiveness. He gave me the people. I prayed about it. I prayed about it. Sometimes he showed me people that I couldn't even remember did something to me or said something that I believed. Once it was a teacher. I mean, I haven't been in school in quite some time. Um, but that teacher said something that I believed. I couldn't even remember it. And God brought it to my remembrance because I asked him, Lord, who haven't I forgiven? Who is still there? Why do I still believe because of someone? The way some people treat you, the way your parents spoke to you, they, if they maybe said you'll never amount to anything, you start believing that. And it shows in your life, it cripples you. If you get treated badly by a spouse, like you're worthless, like you're nothing, you start believing you're worthless and you're nothing. If your children have no respect for you, you think you're a bad parent, you th once again, you think you're worthless and you're nothing. It's a belief, it's a belief that comes from this. Sometimes it's just an argument and you believe that you were right. But you went into an argument and going into arguments is wrong in the, in the eyes of God. So even if the whole thing was not your fault, you take responsibility for your part of that. And you forgive the shortcomings of the person that you're arguing with. Because that yields relationships. And the kingdom of God is about peace. So the moment there is no peace, you must understand. You're not in the kingdom of heaven. You're not in the kingdom of light anymore. You're now operating in the kingdom of darkness. So keeping that pain with you means that that person that might have died already is still hurting you. You're not, you're not spiting them by holding on to your pain. You are hurting yourself and only yourself and your relationship with God. It interferes with it because it's, it's a principle. It's something God says you must do. So are you caring more about holding on to this pain than what you are caring about what God told you to do? Because we are here to do what God tells us to do. Because we love Him, because we honor Him. We obey Him because we love Him. So you ask for the Lord, who is the ultimate forgiver. Jesus know about forgiveness. He had to do it. You ask Him for His forgiveness. Ask Him to come into your heart and help bring His forgiveness and His strength in that area for you, so that you can have the strength to forgive. And sometimes you have to do it over and over and over. You'll know when you have truly forgiven someone. There's a release. There's almost a physical weight that gets taken off your shoulders when you have forgiven someone. That means when their name gets mentioned, you do not get triggered. When you know you're going to see them if you go there, you don't not go there because you might see them, because you've made peace. You have let God show you his heart. Sometimes it helps to write letters to that person. You don't always, you don't always have to give it. You don't always have to face your perpetrator or your the person that hurt you face to face. Like I say, sometimes they already die. But what helps is to write it out. Write why. You are so angry with them. Give your points. Why did you make me believe about myself? How have you ruined my life? How have you hurt me? And 
and then you can say, but I choose with my free will that God gave me to forgive you because he wants me to forgive you. And then look at the Bible and what it says you are. I'm just going to just find it quickly. Now I'm just going to read this to you so that you make it personal. Um, because you believed a lie and believing that lie hurt you. It shaped you. When God says, renew your mind or repent, it means you change your way of thinking and you change your way, your mind. And this person that you haven't forgiven has that you believe something in your mind about yourself that is not true. So you write this letter and you get your pain out where you can physically see it. And you choose to forgive. But then what you do is you say, Holy Spirit, bring in your truth. This was a lie that I believed. Bring your truth. So this is, this is who you are. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon you as a love gift from your wonderful heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, all because He sees you wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate Him, or you celebrate Him, with all your heart. And He chose you to be His very own, joining you to himself even before he laid the foundation of the universe. Because of his great love, he ordained you so that you would be seen as holy in his eyes and as unstained innocence. For it was always in his perfect plan to adopt you as his delightful child through your union with Jesus, the Anointed One so that his tremendous love that cascades over you would glorify his grace for the same love he had for his beloved one Jesus he has for you and this unfolding plan brings him great pleasure I'm just going to stop there I think Ephesians 1 it was from verse 3 this was in the Passion if you just carry on the whole book of Ephesians is about your identity in Christ. It's your walk with Jesus. And it's our eventually standing in that place of authority and understanding who you are. But if you want to know who you are, you want to bring that truth in, go read Ephesians 1 and 2. Just to, to establish your identity. I'm sorry that you had pain and I'm sorry that people caused you pain in your life. But don't let that define you. Let Jesus define you. There is a lot of, lot of clues and tips how to forgive. Like I said, now with writing it down, it really helped me a lot. And then also burning those letters gives a release. You have to start believing something else. So you have to take the lie that they told you and you have to bring the truth of the word into it. And then you ask Holy Spirit to come and fill that place. You apply the stripes of Jesus to those pains, to those hurt places. Because these pains goes deep into your soul. It goes deep into your belief system. How you've done things in your life was shaped by your belief system, of how, what people said. And the devil knows your pain, he knows your weakness, he knows where you got hurt because he initiated that pain. So now as you are older, he will use the people around you to push that same button, to make you believe that same thing, so it just builds on. But God can move mountains, and you can shift mountains. You can say to this mountain, 
be thrown into the sea and it can be done. Unforgiveness is a lot of people's stronghold. It's a lot of, a lot of people's problem with not truly having an intimate relationship with God. It's because you cannot let go. And God said you must. It's like you can only go to the next step or grab onto the next rope once you've released the other one so that you can use both your hands to grab it. That's why it's so important to let go of the past. You know, Sodom and Gomorrah, when Lot and his wife was told to, to leave that place because God was going to destroy it. And he said, do not look back. And they ran and she looked back and she, she was turned into a salt pillar. A pillar, looking back. A pillar doesn't go anywhere. It stands still. It doesn't have a future. It doesn't go forward. Don't be a stone pillar. Don't hold on to the past. In the beginning of these sessions, I said, confess your sins to one another. Release things. Get it out. Get it out. Release it. Release forgiveness. Just remember, God created all of us. And just like you are in pain now because of something someone said, that person that hurt you, to have that kind of character, they probably also got hurt by someone. And it's just, it's a snowball effect. We hurt because we got hurt. We're in pain because someone caused our pain, because someone caused their pain, because someone caused their pain. Let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop right here. Let's teach our children how to forgive so that it doesn't carry on in their lives. How to let go. I don't... What is truth? If people are speaking to you and they're not speaking the truth of the word, you do not take their words into your heart and give it a place to live. You let go of it. And you say, I won't look back. I've released my past. Because it's only hampering my future and it's destroying my present. Really go into this deep. Read it for yourself. You cannot be forgiven if you do not forgive. Go look at signs. Go look what bitterness and unforgiveness does to your body. If you're struggling with a sickness, with a disease, with being overweight. If that is the problem is it's normally a result of something deeper. It's, some, it's a result of something you believe. Let's believe the truth that we, God says about you. Your identity is in Christ. And Christ has already overcome everything. And he has mastered forgiveness. So ask him for his help. Ask him for his healing. Because your journey into holiness, your journey into the deeper things of God, He's not going to go forward. You're going to be like that salt pillar that is always looking to the past. Let go. And let God. Do not take this lightly. But really go read it. Read it and read it until you understand. I have to. And then say, God, how am I going to do this? It's been so long. How do I do this? And God's going to show you who you must forgive face to face. Who you write letters to. Who you just tell him, Lord, I release this person. I forgive him. Thank you for giving me a heart, a forgiving heart. He will show you, but bring him into this. You do not have to do it alone. He is there to guide you, to heal you, to carry you. He's, he's faithful. And He can do this for you. And I guarantee you, because I've gone through this myself, that your life will never be the same again. And you know, the more you forgive, the easier it becomes to forgive. 
You do not hold on to things anymore. You, it becomes a habit. Create a habit in your life to forgive and to let go. God says, I will, I will deal with them. Leave the wrath for me. God will deal with that person. But you have to release them so that he can. And by your forgiveness to that person, you show them the character of Christ. And you might change the way they treat people in the future and save someone else from the pain that they've put you through. You might stop something right there. God never asks something of us if it's not important. This was serious, <laughs> but I, I come to you with a lot of love from the heart of a father. I say forgive. All of us also need someone to forgive us sometimes. We don't know how our words have hurt others. So sometimes we also just need to go say we're sorry to someone. And that be saying you're sorry makes it easier for that person to forgive you. Don't let your pride get in the way. Pride is of the devil. He's the prince of pride. Don't care so much about this physical identity. You're a kingdom child. You're a child of God the Father. Don't let petty nonsense ruin your life. Say you're sorry. Even if they don't forgive you, you did your part. And you but say it from your heart. God knows your heart. And if it comes from the heart, it will hit the person's heart that you're apologizing to. So do your part. Like I said, let's look different from the rest of the world. Let's be a set apart, holy people. Let's be an example to our kids so that they not sit with the same things as we do. Let go. It is worth it. You get healing. You get freedom. Your life goes forward. When you forgive. You must be blessed. Ah, Lord, thank you for helping us on this journey. I ask that every person, Lord, that has heard this message this morning, I don't think one of us don't have someone to forgive. Or someone that we need to say sorry to. Please give us the courage and the strength. Please give us your strength and your love for that person or those people. Work deep in our hearts. Search our hearts, Lord, and show us who we haven't forgiven. Who we must still forgive. Show us. So that we can do it. Open our eyes. And heal our hearts, Lord, please. We give our hearts to you, Holy Spirit, and we ask healing. And we ask for revelation and light. Heal our belief. Heal our hearts. Strengthen us. So that we can overcome this thing in our lives. So that we can move forward. So that we can look like children of the light. That is not stuck in darkness. That is not salt pillars looking into the past. But that we can shine as your glorious priesthood. Like a light on the hilltop. So that we can look different. So that we can change the people around us. To show them the light and the freedom that comes from your kingdom. Please bless every person here. Thank you for the strength that you give them.
and thank you that they will never be the same again and that forgiveness will become second nature of their nature. Oh, you are such a good father. We glorify and we honor your name, Lord. Thank you. I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Good luck in this journey. And I would love to hear some testimonies about how this has changed your life and the lives of those around you because you decided with your free will to take this step. And God so bless you. And I'll see you next time.